welcome, welcome to the wine show at home, Shane Jones, sake expert. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for uh, having me, Joe. It's a real pleasure uh, to join you today to talk a little bit about Japanese sake in particular, because our three sakes, which will be something all come from the motherland, as it were. Let's get stuck in straight away. I think I've got these in the right order. And the first sake that we have, the, the stream, is chilled. Is, that's right, isn't it? This one is chilled. Correct. And this one here is uh, brewed in northern Japan. And it's a fairly delicate style of sake. Um, so we're starting off on a delicate note, and then we're building our intensity as we move on. So this is um, a sake which is going to be really soft on the palate and it is made with a special sake rice called uh, Dewa San San and Dewa San San is it isn't relatively new but it's been around since the 1980s um, and it's known for its fragrance it's known for its softness and it comes from a region called Yamagata Yamagata is in the northern uh, part of Japan and here we have a, a particular designation, and this designation or category, as it were, is called Junmai Daijingo. So Junmai Daijingo. Junmai Daijingo. Daijingo. With a hard Ginjo. <laughs> Ginjo. Daijingo. And this is bringing it all flooding back when I was in the temple in Japan where effectively it was a sort of home of sake and it sort of has lots of sake barrels there and one of the things that you have to do is fire this arrow into the to a barrel of sake and this is the prize that I got for doing it there was a Shinto priest it was a Shinto temple and um, he, he had a he was looked a bit sort of worse for wear. And he says, <laughs> you're right. And he said, oh, we had a big tasting last night. The oh, right. The Shinto priests <laughs> got smashed. And that's the great thing about Japan. You know, your experience um, never leaves you. And sake always adds to that experience. And certainly that's been my, um, uh, my experience when, I, when I've been there. Sake uh, not only encourages new relationships, but it... Uh, it always uh, fuels uh, memories. So really, this is a style of sake that is fantastic as an introduction to the style. I can see you've gone straight in for the taste, but I wanted to tempt you into the smell first. Well, I was smelling. Uh, I was okay. smelling before she. I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> I've already got aroma um, notes lined up here. And what you should get here is that kind of aromatics. It's really aromatic, particularly of flowers. And I would say things like roses. It's interesting that you should say that because it's pale and we tend yeah. to sort of jump into, oh, right, well, is it going to smell like things that are pale? But it's not. There are red fruit aromas that come through in this. Exactly. And in particular, summer fruits, so things like raspberries. Yeah. It is a, a sort of summer pudding feel to it. This is like an aromatic white wine, I mean, in terms of food matching. Pretty much. Sort of. Yes. It's pretty much an aromatic white wine made, by, made with this particular uh, sake rice called Dewa San San. Um, it, I think it's since 1997 it's become um, recognised as one of the official sakamai, which is the word used for these uh, special types of rice, which are... Um, used in the production of sake. What sort of food are we going to have with this? I mean, it doesn't have to be Japanese food. Now, this is one of the myths as it relates to sake, that the only context is Japanese food. Um, I'm going to just think about more Western food. So things like, how about a nice, creamy and delicious burrata? And I don't know if you love burrata, but yes. I love burrata. It's a meeting of purity with the burrata and the sake and then delicate shellfish things like mussels and clams for vegetarians or you know those that might be vegan a nice fresh green salad so things from your garden um, so for example cucumbers radishes um, maybe a little bit of a peppery rocket as well all of these um, uh, types of ingredients would respond uh, extremely well to the sake in my opinion 
Oh, that's I'm, I'm, I'm sort of getting hungry here. I've been fasting in the mornings, and so now I get really hungry by the time by this time of day. So I'm I'm now ready to go. Should we move on? We're going to go and try this. What, what is, is the next one? The purple one. So this one is called Purple Warrior, um, and this one here is a different style of sake. It's called uh, Junmai, uh, and this particular sake is made with a rice called. And wait for it, Joe. It's a little bit of a mouthful. Goyakuman Goku. Goyakuman Goku. Goyakuman Goku. Well done. Goyakuman Goku. Um, and this is a type of rice that gives a very clean and dry style of sake. Um, and Junmai is a category or designation where you're going to have a completely different experience from uh, what we had before. Is that the case for you? Can you see totally a huge difference? A completely different. This is night and day. This style can sometimes be a Marmite style of sake for some people. It could be a, just a little bit too uh, umami driven, too savoury. And I then it has I love a it. cereal note. Yes. I was, you're, you've got the right word because you're saying cereal note. I was there going, it smells a bit like Special K. <laughs> Great, so like bran and wheat, precisely. That's, that's exactly what I mean about it. A little bit ricey as well. Um, so this is so one of the reasons why we have that set of aromas is really down to how the rice uh, has been polished. So here we are at 60%, so we have more of the rice grain intact. And when you have more of the rice grain intact, it then extracts more of this uh, sort of rice cereal driven characteristic. And when we come to taste it, in fact, maybe I shouldn't prompt you, I should let you taste it and then make a comparison uh, with the uh, Jumai Daginjo, which we have just had. You know, I'll tell you what it's a bit like, when you get, it, there's a barley feel to this. When yes. you go into a whiskey distillery and you get a sort of handful of barley grains, it's got that granular, it is, it's a mealy feel to it. Let's yes. have a taste. That kind of bran. And there's much more spice and almost sort of pepper character mm. here. This is muscular. So this is full body. It, it is. It's full bodied. There's richness and weight and. It is rich. You've absolutely nailed it. It's rich. It's weighty. It's intense. It's it tastes of steam rice uh, combined with miso soup. Um, a, a bit like oat porridge in the morning, which might be off-putting to some people, but it's got this real savoury undertone. Oh, it is, I mean, it, it is lovely. There are red fruits that are still underneath there. There are darker red fruits, which seems weird. I mean, this, interestingly, the, the stream... It has a little bit more colour than the first one. A little bit more colour, but they're both very pale. It seems strange that you're going, oh yeah, I can get the red fruits in here, you know. And, and this is common. Uh, most sake will be very sort of crystalline in colour, if anything, it may have a little bit of a green tinge here or there. And um, any colour with sake usually comes with some type of ageing. I'm thinking uh, certainly beef, but mushrooms, um, roasted vegetables, lamb. 100%. You can even add a splash of this when you are cooking a casserole. and. Uh, quite often, uh, there are some dishes which would call for Madeira, for example. This is a great alternative. So now, th that sort of oak, when I say oak, what I mean is that sort of slightly wood aged feel to it. This hasn't been in barrels. It hasn't been anywhere near a barrel at all. This is strictly down to how the rice has been polished and also the fermentation process. So, we've had a quick fermentation here. And one of the other things that adds to the savoury complexity and that level of acidity and astringency is um, uh, down to how uh, the pre-fermentation starter was prepared. There's this process of the koji, isn't there? The, this mould, Japan's national mould, as I understand <laughs> it. So koji is very important because 
it contains enzymes that will help to break down the starch in our rice grains into sugar. So unlike in the production of wine, you have grapes, and the grapes have a natural um, supply of sugars. However, this isn't the case with uh, sake production. We then have a two-step process, and koji first helps us to break down, using its enzymes, break down the, the carbohydrates into simple sugars, and then we'll use yeast to convert those sugars into alcohol, so effectively our sake. So it's very, very important in the sake making process. Now, one of the things I should say also about this style of sake is the fact that it is fantastic drunk warm. If you're having something like a casserole or even a steak, you have hot food with hot sake and you've got the meeting of temperatures and it's such a thrilling experience. Well, what I've got over here, I've got my, this is a, a, a sort of innovative ice bucket, you won't be able to quite see it, but it, um, it's normally you put ice in one side and it sort of cools it, but I put some hot water in it. Fantastic. So that it'll just gently radiate heat. And I've got a little thing happening here as well. Traditionally, you'd warm it up in this little <laughs> decanter, as it were, called a tokuri. I'm just going to pour a little bit in there. And I'm using this opportunity to show it off because it's one of my more recent acquisitions from Japan. And I'm going to just put mine in some water too, so that we're um, doing it at the same time. And then we can come back and taste it in a, in a few minutes to see what kind of difference uh, the temperature makes in enjoying the sake. Should we try this last one which comes in a, is this a half bottle? So this is a half bottle and this one here is, is, is approximately 300 millilitres called koshu and koshu basically means aged sake. This has a, a kind of, it's not quite a golden colour, but it's quite a bright yellow, really. Mm. It's knocking on the door of, of being golden. And, uh, and this one here is made with Yamada Nishiki. And Yamada Nishiki is the king of sake rice. Really, really fragrant and aromatic. If you think Dewa Sansan -san was particularly um, enticing and pretty, Yamada Nishiki takes it to another uh, level. But what we're showcasing here is an example of aged sake. And there isn't a strict, there isn't a strict legal definition for aged sake, but it's widely expected that anything from about three years or more can be considered uh, koshu. So a nice uh, bright yellow, almost golden colour. There's something slightly <laughs> Harry Potter about this. <laughs> you know, you're sort of opening old parchments and casting yeah. spells and... <laughs> Well, let's see what sort of spell this casts on you for the rest of the of the rest of the evening. You are good. We need to have you on an awful lot more, Shane, because you're much better at this than me. Can I can I have a taste? Go for a taste. Go for a taste. Mm. So this leather, and it's also quite nutty. I got this kind of hazelnutty character and some uh, dried apricots. And actually, when you have a taste, the uh, the attack is that. When I say the attack, the sort of initial taste, it's that sweet whiskey character that comes straight mm. in. And it is nutty, rich. And when I say mm. sweet, it's sweet as in sweet nuts rather it's than... Sweet, yes, yeah. I would declare this to be a sake da meditazione. It is one that you share with a special friend whom you haven't seen for a very long period of time. Something to just take your time with. He's got some of the characteristics of, of spirits, but without that alcoholic heat and, and glow. Precisely, precisely. Well, this is one of the styles that is extremely popular outside of Japan. There really isn't an appetite uh, for the koshu uh, style in Japan, um, just because it can be a little bit too intense for the Japanese palate. And another point here, looking at the alcohol, a lot of people think that sake is so much higher in alcohol in comparison to wine, and it certainly isn't. Uh, the first sake, the Junmai Daiginjo, was only 14%. The, uh, the Junmai Yamahai, 15%, and then the Koshu, 15%. So it's really, it sits within the same sort of range that you would find for wine. It has become a fashionable thing, hasn't it? I mean, you know, in the UK and the United States, sake is enjoying a moment in the sun within the last it three is. or four years. It, it very much is. 
Um, and certainly within the context of enjoying it with food in restaurants, and you find particularly with millennials that they are embracing uh, this new drink, as it were, many of whom have actually traveled to Japan, so they've tasted in situ and seize any opportunity in Europe or elsewhere to enjoy the drink at home, as it were. Oh, honestly, this is an absolute treat. And um, I've just poured myself some purple dragon, lightly ah. warmed. So warm purple dragon. So I am going to have mine um, in an ochoco, which is the traditional way. And again, I'm slightly showing off here because I actually made this ochoco at a pottery in Japan a few years ago. <laughs> So let's let's revisit this, and it's it's going to be difficult for me to actually smell from the chocolate. But but I tell um, you, I'm immediately just... what's happened for me is it's brought out these really interesting herbal notes to, to mm. it. They've really come through this lovely sort of grass and herb character. The savouriness is just a delight. This is umami turbocharged. And I really hope these three styles of sake have given you just a small window into how diverse and how exciting sake is as a drink. I mean, it is the national drink of the country. Uh, it is drunk almost every day. And it is a nice welcome change from wine. Everybody should give it a go. Now, these aren't budget sakes, are they? I mean, they're not the well, cheapest they, thing, but they're let, premium. Let's say that they are affordable sakes. Um, for example, our first sake, uh, which is the stream. It retails for about £30 a bottle. And what I should say also is that this bottle, once opened, can it will remain fresh for one to two weeks. After a while, you will notice that the Ginjo car and um, those sort of aromatics will start to fade a little bit. But it's certainly all three of them will keep longer than your average bottle of wine would. It'll stay fresh for longer. Brilliant. Um, a same, or I should say a similar price for the Yamaha Junmai, and then £15 for, uh, approximately £15 for the last uh, sake, Koshu. Uh, so they're really on the affordable side. You can find Junmai Daiginjos for hundreds and hundreds of pounds, and similarly you can find Koshu for hundreds and hundreds of pounds. So these are some really good value sakes that really, really deliver. Which one was your favourite from your own personal choice? Um, Yamaha um, Purple Dragon. Um, okay. Partly because I know exactly what I'm going to do with it. Right, right. I'm okay. making a miso soup with fillet steak and it's got lots of mushrooms in it. And that is going to be just magical with that. Super. Good luck. Kampai. We should kampai. 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 I will kampai with the Junmai Daiginjo. Kampai. Kampai.